Story time with Hey Villa Cubs and welcome back to Story Time with Two Village Girls. I'm Serena, and for the month of March we're reading stories about women's history. Today's story is called We Wait for the Sun. The girl in the story, Dovey Johnson Roundtree, was born more than 100 years ago in Charlotte, North Carolina. During a time of racial inequality in America, she grew up to become a legendary civil rights lawyer, fighting for justice. No matter how dangerous the fight was, she refused to quit. She believed that a better day was coming for African American people because that was what she had been taught by her bold and brave grandmother, Rachel Bryant Graham. Dovey loved to tell stories of her grandma, Rachel. The story Dovey loved best is the one you are about to read. In the hour before dawn, we slip out of the house, and the midsummer night is dark and cool. As I follow the swish, swish of my grandmother's skirt, I can smell the damp earth beneath my feet and feel the dewy air on my face. Moving through the darkness toward the woods where blackberries grow, I'm certain Grandma Rachel and I are the only ones awake in the whole world. But then, as if by some secret signal, the others appear in doorways and fall into line one by one behind us. By daylight, these are the grown-up ladies who come to quilt with Grandma, passing food over the fence, gathering in our backyard for soap making. But now they are just shadowy figures in our silent march, our secret mission, our berry picking. It grows cooler as we enter the forest and darker. Dovey May, Grandma calls out. I'm right here, I answer, right over here. The darkness isn't anything to be afraid of, child. If you wait just a little bit, your eyes will learn to see and you can find your way. Hold on to my apron, now. We begin to walk. Grandma's steps are swift and sure, and I move as she does. I fix my eyes on the shiny heels of her shoes, and I listen. The darkness holds a thousand sounds. As we push deeper and deeper into the woods, the blackness turns to gray, and sleepy birds begin calling to each other, sending echoes through the treetops. Grandma says the birds will lead you to the best berries every time. Sure enough, as we follow the sounds of the beating wings just ahead, we come into a clearing ringed with berry-studded bushes. The ladies swoop down, pails clanging, but I move closer to Grandma, following the sweep of her hand as it grazes a bush and comes back with the first berry of the day, frosted with dew. I open my mouth. She drops in the berry as I bite down hard and suck the juice and know that there is no blackberry anywhere like this one. So fat it squirts seedy blue juice down my overalls, and so sweet I keep licking my lips to get the taste. Grandma looks down at me and laughs. Then she turns to the bushes and starts to hum, the way she does when it's time to get to work. The clearing fills with sounds of berries, hitting tin pails. From my spot in the bushes, I pick berries as fast as I can and listen to the whispers of the going-ons at church. Already, heat is rising from the forest floor, making me think of the feast that is coming in just a little while, of how I'll eat berries from the minute I get home to the minute I go to bed. Again and again, Grandma reaches low or stands tiptoe to pluck berries, and then, suddenly, in the middle of her rush, she stops. Look, Dubby May, she whispers, over yonder. Slowly, slowly, the horizon pinkens. Here she comes, Grandma whispers. She draws me to her, and together we watch the pink turn to red, the red to gold. Then, all at once, as if at my grandmother's command, the orange ball that is the sun shows its face. It rises up over the edge of the world, and as it does, Grandma rises too and stands, just looking her face shining in the light. 
I don't know how long we stay there watching, but when Grandma claps her hand on my shoulder and shakes out her skirt, dawn is day. My grandmother turns and heads down the path, quick and hurried again, leading me home. When I think of Grandma, I see her there, standing in the clearing, pale and sack at her feet, face upturned to meet the dawn. Always I see her, waiting for the sun. The end. Thanks, Villa Cubs, for tuning in again to another story time with two village girls. We'll see you next week. Bye!